<sighs> Where am I? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm in a really poorly designed desktop screen. And is that Netscape Navigator? Okay, let's just go to our default browser and go to today's subject. Welcome to the Smash Food Battle Marathon. This will be a story of love, hate, sadness, and one of morals. What are you doing? Expect your tears, expect your anger, but most importantly, expect your laughter. Smosh is still around today, posting pretty frequently to various amounts of views. And it's without saying, Smosh has come a very long way from its humble beginnings as a website, moving to this very niche website called YouTube in 2005. I don't know if you've heard of it, there's a guy who has Crohn's disease on it. And on that very website, there were women with huge, huge personalities known as Reply Girls, and everybody loved them. And in that time from 2005, they expanded into many avenues, such as Smosh Gaming, L Smosh, and their new channel, Ghetto Smosh. How many bloods can I smoke today? If this video gets 300 likes, I will react to every Ghetto Smosh episode and make a video on it. But their history is kind of sad in contrast with how Ian and Anthony cared so much for this channel that they made together. Anthony, low on money and liking the idea, sold his channel to this place called Defy Media for zero dollars, just in return so they can get a couple stocks. So I sold it for zero dollars. Selling for stock is completely valueless unless that company goes public. Unfortunately, this acquisition pretty much made Anthony more of an employee rather than an owner. So he was working for his own channel rather than curating it. They were becoming puppets for a company that they no longer owned. For example, the Smosh Food Battle game, which they had made a Kickstarter for, and they had not really much to show for it. There was no idea for that game. They were just like, put your face and reputation on the line, beg people for, for money for a game that has no concept whatsoever. And we'll just figure it out later. Turns out Defy Media got shut down because market conditions got in the way, which is basically company language for saying, well, we owe some people money, but we could say we're bankrupt and people won't know. Tee -hee. Hey, Pyroplush, you'll never send me off to work for an MCM like Machinima, will you? Who said you can speak? Get back to work, so. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Ah yes, 2006, a time where you can count every pixel on the screen and needed a hearing aid because they hadn't quite figured out audio capture yet. What are you doing? Eating a taquito. And I hear that they were both the inspiration for the walking man emoji on the iPhone. Taquito, more like crap eaters. Well, what's your favorite food? Duh, idiot, they're right here in my hand. Pink Frosted Sprinkled Donut! Yeah, you'll notice that they are in the baby phase of a YouTuber and haven't quite bloomed yet. Talking so monotonely, no exaggerated movements or shouting. One of everyone's humble beginnings. Today we're gonna celebrate because I got 100 subscribers. I thought of talking about Crohn's disease because it's something I have, obviously. Or I made your fucking lifetime income in two streams! Suck my fucking balls! Even in the title card, you can see that they just figured out what Chroma Keying is and they're having fun with it, which is, well, it's cute. Alright, time to teach Anthony a lesson. I accidentally left the captions on for this and, well, I can see that the person whoever did them, they were having so much fun doing them. To the point where they just gave up and asked someone else to do the job for them. How about this plunger? And well, very quickly, you'll be reminded of this environment where it's just two friends goofing off and making stupid videos together. Anyone who knew of YouTube back in 2008 will know that this is a completely lost art. Which, there's nothing wrong with it at all, but I do appreciate the humble beginnings of YouTube and that whole environment back then, especially for Smosh, considering the history with Defy Media. But... I just still taste pretty good. They do a competition on which food is a better pen. Pen! And, uh, they subvert my expectation here. Alright, let's put this beef to use. <laughs> I wrote the Bill of Rights! Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was good. Lipstick. Ah yes, old YouTube and vomit jokes. This will be a reoccurring theme for the next 10 years if not more. At one point the food has to be put to the test of being a girlfriend or a boyfriend, and uh, when it comes to Anthony's turn... He forfeits. My donut had a hole. Taquito is, you know, not exactly a hole. Anthony has decided to forfeit this donut. Now notice how in future episodes, after this joke, every item Anthony has is rod shaped. Pool floaties! Pool floaties? Yeah. 
can't! These guys are fucked! Sometimes it's like Anthony breaks character. I mean, these overreactive bits themselves aren't funny, but considering the time it came out, it, it's just charming enough. It just puts a smile on my face, you know? Like. <laughs> And one theme you'll notice at the end of every episode of Food Battle is that one or the other person dies. This episode, it's Anthony! <laughs> but in the next episode, who will give him quick revive? This episode gets an A tier for classic. You think your celery is gonna beat my pink frosted sprinkled donuts? Then you're going down! A lot of old YouTuber smoshish scream or shouty humor, it, it kind of grates as the more you go on. It's not my cup of tea per se, but if I were 10, this would be comedic genius. Ian, can you hand me that? The baguette? What'd you just call me? I asked if you wanted the baguette. I knew something was off. Hey, do that in 2022, your career's over. Rob a defenseless person! I'll rob you of this win! <laughs> it's like the ironically awkward and unfunny so that people who are on the humor of so many layers of irony will find it funny, but it's also kind of balanced enough so also kids will find it funny unironically. <laughs> You're casting a wide net for an audience here. I'd like to see you beat me when our food is used as a steering wheel. <laughs> This'll be easy. Yeah, as easy as my mom. High five. I love this. It's just, it's, it's gotten so dumb that it is just funny. Go right, right. I said right. Come on, don't it. No! Oh, Ian dies this episode. What? 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 I wasn't paying attention. Okay, this is totally trippy. Now I don't have like any pulse at all. <laughs> Oh man, this is awesome! At the end of every episode, a commentator comes on to announce that they won the game and they will ask what they're doing now. I'm gonna go home and watch Toy Story! I like the dynamic where Ian just tells him the, to fuck off. What are you gonna do now? Yeah, I would buy a gun to shoot at fans. Yeah, we are still in the era of the humble two friends just goofing off making videos era. This one goes on the B tier right here. See? 2008, it starts with Toy Story on the VHS, and then suddenly, Zombie Ian appears. Over. And actually, there's a pretty good joke here about not being able to hear him through the glass window. What? The only reason I'm pointing this out is because I expected this era of Smosh to be the same of what the entirety of Smosh is known to be, which is the loud, shouty humor. Shut up! Sure thing, dick biscuit! I said that in Food Battle. But you'll notice that in earlier episodes or even the earlier videos is that they played a lot more with their humor, a lot more subtleties and stuff, a lot more intricacies to their jokes. Anyway, Ian upgraded his hair from Anthony to early 2000s rock band vocalist. So he's one step away from spiking his hair up like that one game PS5 man. You know the one. Anthony uses churros this year despite winning last year's with the celery stick, so why not continue using the same one? That will cost him his life. Let's see whose food can be sunglasses. Ah, 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 my eyes! Actually, the you could see that the, the churro is blocking the sun here. You are being lied to. Do not listen to them. They are employed by the government. They are fake. Fine, let's just do this anti-theft device. Sweet! 1099 free hours! That's like forever! Yeah! No! I love the Newgrounds tier voice acting. It's it's just so cartoony. It's like an in real life anime. That's what Smosh Food Battle is. It's an in real life anime. Anyway, my script says that Ian turns his donut into a C4 stick. Um, what? Bomb has been Whoa. So Anthony dies this year from a planted IED under his car. I left trash on the ground! I don't think much happens in this episode, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of an E tier right there. No, nah, not good. No! Ian turned into the bowl cut again, bros, we lost him. 2009 is when the visual production and, well, general production stepped up a bit. More usage of VFX and props and all the likes. Let's do a shovel, you dig? <laughs> if you want more stupid pun, I'm gonna punt your ass to Bangkok. Why are you laughing? You said... What? You said punt. I have no idea why, but these stupid jokes actually make me laugh. They're just so dumb. The subversion of expectation was kind of genius. Greetings, stranger. What are you selling? This is, this is a vase. 
Ah! Oh, and there's a Resident Evil 4 joke with the merchant. I remember that whole meme era. This is when Smosh were making so many video game parodies. Like, do you remember the, the, the fucking Zelda music video and the Assassin's Creed 3 one? Oh, God. I'm old. Let's do a video game. Let's play Donut Massacre 64. Dude, no, you can't be ruining a perfectly good N64 like that. I'm sorry, dude. But you know what, let's just use the mind control device to, uh, I don't know, get some girls to make out with us? Yeah! You now want to kiss him. Oh! And again, YouTube in 2009 was still the age of vomit jokes and other poo poo and pee pees. The episode ends with Ian murdering Limp Biscuit's wife. I put cyanide in your burritos. And now, Limp Biscuit wants revenge. You killed my wife. Limp Biscuit is married to Anthony in this universe. <laughs> but Ian, he has a trump card, sending Limp Biscuit. It's in the Susan Boyle sex tape room. You know, the woman who won the X Factor for singing the Le, Le Sad French song about something. Yeah, I know you're miserable. You live in France. Ah! And this one, B tier. <laughs> To be fair, this episode is what began making me question who they're making these videos for. I'm noticing that every year the visual quality of the videos increases, but the substance of the jokes themselves decrease. <laughs> but you also have to consider the time in between this yearly series, what videos they were making in between, and how that evolved them and their humor. From viewing this, I'm seeing that they're moving away from jokes in multiple layers and substance to more slapstick and quick humor. You know, what I do on this channel, there's a different image happening behind me right now. One of them is going to be funny to you. It's most likely that they noticed the younger audience liked to watch them more than older ones. So they had more explosions, more piss, more poo and vomits and random XDs. Which I can attest to this because I was 10 once and I found them funny. Anyway, the episode ends with Ian murdering Anthony again. Who would have thought? They're not even dying by their food of choice at this point. Ian is just murdering him with a weapon. There's irony in the joke itself that they're supposed to be battling with food, but they're dying by worldly events. <laughs> Uh, I can't even believe I'm analyzing into this. One of the weakest episodes by far. F tier, do better. Let's do deodorant. Is that donut deodorant? Sure is. <laughs> Kids find the most dumbest shit funny, man. It's it's just completely bizarre. I get why Nick Care 30 will just make kid friendly content. They they will watch anything. Or would it be possible also to keep it family friendly by any chance? For example, this GPS joke. <laughs> Let's do a GPS. GPS. Oh, green pube socks? Green pube socks makes zero sense at all. But you know, my 10 year old self thought this was more than just a Marvel one-liner. Let's do a time travel device. Let's do this. Unicorn power! I have something to tell you about. Whoa, I'm in 2006. I love you. It's kind of genius that they did the joke of going back in time to their old videos in 2006 as if they were cringing at it and they had to make up for it by making fun of it in some way. But the jokes then were a little better. Pube socks? All right, you long sugary stick of goodness. Turn this stapler into a hot chick. No, I said a hot chick. That's better. And this is where some jokes become less of a knee-jerk reaction from me. It's more of like a nose exhale laugh, not really a stomach cramper or anything. This episode ends with the most anime dialogue ever. <laughs> Casing Anthony's elaborate plan to hide Ian's donut under his candy stick. I hid your donut underneath the fake lollipop! So that Ian will also poison his donut and kill himself. And because this is basically IRL anime, Anthony hides a bow and arrow in his stick and uses it to kill Ian. It's realistic. Have you seen Jojo? Guns be jump scaring the letters you read. And I know up until these recent episodes, I've been negative nancying about them all. But in the grand spectacle, these are charming to watch because it is a time capsule of the humor that they once had. C tier. Let's just do a fake ID. Good afternoon, sir. I would like to purchase this fine pornographic magazine. ID? Sure, I got it right here. This is what I mean by I'm confused who they're making this for. Alcohol and pawn jokes and then loud shouting to this ooh bit with silly faces. Ooh. 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 Oh. Ah. I mean, it's becoming hard to note anything. There's not really much left to say because the formula is formulaic. Ah. 
Again, Ian kills Anthony with a gun. <laughs> wait, Anthony is Anthony? But wait, viewer, there's more. There are layers to this arc and it's going somewhere. Anthony swapped his brain with Ian's and then swapped Anthony's body's heart with a donut? Killing Ian, but also the body with him? <laughs> I have to watch next episode to find out what happens next. Uh, listen, I'm trying really hard here. It's getting spicy. A tier. The episode begins and... They're back? Uh, how? Bro, this anime skipped a whole manga arc. It's like Akira, you can't do that. Anthony in this episode uses a gummy snake. You cannot be more on the nose about the phallic objects. Please be a hot girl, gummy snake. Please, 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 please. Sweet! Oh, sh**. Another arc, holy! Anthony kills a woman on accident and now he has to hide the body? But of course... Damn right there! America. Yeah! My mom's bra stopped the sword! <laughs> this show is making a comeback! My laugh is upgraded from a nose exhale up to... A mouth exhale. Anthony and Ian come to their senses, like Germany and Japan realizing that a six year long war is completely pointless. So they come round and hug the UN and kiss a lot out like mwah, 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 mwah. Anthony dies this time inside of Anthony's body because a sword fell from the ceiling. IRL anime equals contrived plots, contrived plot set pieces, contrived script that I'm reading. Yeah! My mom's bra stopped the sword! This episode was actually C-tier, but because Ian was actually probably wearing his mom's bra, uh, I'm gonna put it down here at D-tier. Sorry, dude. Next. I think this is the year I stopped keeping up with Food Battle as a child, because damn it, man, we're not 13 anymore. We don't play Castle Miner Z, we play Minecraft. I think I'm just completely done with Food Battle. F that! I just came back from the dead. Anthony got a hair upgrade. Did it feel so lush? And this is where the self-awareness kicks in for the series, especially with this episode, as Ian shows his disinterest and they poke fun at it. And I don't have my pink frosted sprinkle dot. Ugh. Fine. Hang. We're back, boys! And this is the episode where stuff truly happens out of nowhere. Anthony is on fire, Ian has some random woman by his side, hands coming from under the table. Ah! But plot twist! Anthony and Ian, they both die! Oh, Hello, I am under the water. C tier. Oh. Come on, boys, we're still waiting on an ST episode. We have two more left. Maybe this could be it. I want a rematch! I would, but I kind of sort of actually maybe might have burned down the past two houses we've had food battle in. No, they moved house? Dude, that was like my childhood. I know I didn't live there, but it was mine. Anthony's using a chocolate covered banana this year. Um... <laughs> Dude, you really need to be careful about getting large round things lodged in your throat. I get it, it's funny. Oh my! It's foreshadowing! Anthony definitely won't die by choking! Look out! I'm a famous fighter! Get out of the way! Dude, they throw shit at Logan Paul? Uh, uh, hey, is that Mike the Doctor? I think this episode came out when YouTube began to get a lot more drama. Uh -huh. And as older creators who have seen it all, it's only natural to cash in on it. Like this reference to women in bikinis and thumbnails. You only had me come over so you could have a hot girl in a bikini in the video's thumbnail, right? No. Do you remember those? <laughs> of course you don't, you're a fucking fetus. That was a close one. <laughs> oh. Oh, luckily my fall was softened by this old guy. Uh, well, I was close. And to top the episode off, I just love the delivery here with Anthony and the reporter. It's just... Uh. I'm gonna burn your house down! Oh boy, can I come? Finally, boys, you have earned yourselves an S tier. Anthony Padilla, P Padilla, Peter Griffin, well done. And this year is the final full stop of the train. Smosh's version of the Avengers Endgame, where Anthony is the Thanos to Ian's Tony Stark. He 
is always inevitable. And what other phallic shape is Anthony using this year? He's not using any, he's using a donut! He is fighting fire with fire. This man has read the book of Sun Tzu's Art of War. He's read the book of Five Rings by Masashi. The first challenge is to see if their food can be a child that they can pay benefits to. The child you just found out you had with your high school girlfriend that you now have visitation rights with. Okay, now daddy needs his peace and quiet. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they've just completely half-assed it. They, they've given up at this point, and I think it's kind of telling. A dabbing Harambe! All right, Donut, I know you could be a dabbing Harambe. <laughs> a Harambe joke, and this year, in 26... Oh, yeah. God, that feels ages ago. Just shortly after this, the best scene ever made plays. <gasps> Meme police! You're under arrest for referencing two outdated memes multiple times! <gasps> Damn, Daniel! What are those? That boy's back at it again with the white band! <laughs> Shut the fuck up. The levels of this episode quickly became ARG levels of a web series. Anthony is pondering about changing and updating his life and moving on to bigger projects in his life, you know, expanding and exploring as a person, not doing the same thing over and over again for 10 years. Do you ever think about getting older and, you know, changing? I mean, why are we still doing food battle? How many times can one person die? They are tired of forcing themselves to do loud pee pee and poo poo humor. Questioning whether doing food battle is something that they want to do. Do you really want to end food battle? Forever? Hence why it took him till the end of the year to do it. But it's Christmas. And we don't like to miss Christmas. An authentic moment in history. Being honest to one another, including the viewer, breaking the fourth wall and reaching the hand out for you to grasp after 10 years of growing up with them. What do you say we toss these donuts and move on to newer things. Yeah. Teaching the valuable lesson of evolving yourself. It's a bittersweet end to the arc of so many teenagers' childhoods. And I'm happy that Smash was around. Can I come? Sure, buddy. Get in here. <laughs> oh. Does this mean I'm fully unemployed now? Yep. yep. But it's not over. There's a Marvel end credit scene, possibly hinting at another episode. It ended six years ago. This episode, for all of its gracious growth, being the cherry on top of this creamy series, deserves an S. Plus plus, uh, with a badass seal of approval. And that's every Smosh food battle ranked by me, the person with the correct opinion. Honestly, the whole series is charming. Some things in retrospect have not aged well, but that's fine. Some jokes are self-aware and other ones are seemingly lost at who they're trying to cater to. But on top of the icing of this series, we can appreciate the sprinkles of charm that it's left behind. That's fucking corny. Hey, if this video gets 300 likes and does well, I will react to Ghetto Smash, their alternate channel. And you can beg me on Twitter to do it. Here's my handle right here. Bye bye.